Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is music royalty, um, versatile singer, actress. Um, I'm speaking to Miss Jennifer Holiday. Miss Holiday, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you and your audience. Oh, thank you for joining us. Um, now, you have some new music out. Um, I heard the single So In Love, which I love, by the way. Thank you. Thank um, you. But we're going to get into that um, in a little bit. Uh, but for those who don't know, uh, well, if you follow music, I'm sure you've heard of Jennifer Holliday. Um, but I, I was reading your uh, your background a little bit. Um, and I, if you don't mind, I want to just talk about that just for a little bit. Um, now, you got your start on Broadway. That's right. I went um, straight from the Baptist Church Choir down in Houston, Texas, uh, to Broadway. Um, I started at 18 years old, and my first show was called Your Arms Too Short to Box with God. And uh, I toured with that show, and I was on Broadway um, with the show. That was my Broadway debut. And while I was performing the role in that show, that's how they saw me for Dreamgirls, which they were just kind of beginning to uh, create. And so uh, I worked on both shows at the same time. So in the in the daytime, worked on um, we worked on uh, creating Dreamgirls. And then in the evenings, um, I did Your Arms Too Short, Device of God. Okay. And was um, was entertainment or theater, music, was, was that always your plan? Because uh, 18 to go, um, it seemed like you already knew what you wanted to do at an early age. No, I didn't know what I, I didn't, didn't have any desire to be uh, in the entertainment industry or to be a singer. Uh, I sang in the church choir, as did my mother and all my relatives and everybody. So it wasn't really kind of something that I had aspired to be. Of course, I idolized Aretha Franklin growing up. And when I was younger, I did sound like her. But then as I got older, my voice got heavier. So I didn't sound like her that much um, as I grew older. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, I was just in the in the church choir, and that's how I got discovered singing in the church choir. Uh, and that's how I heard about Broadway, because the young man who discovered me, his name was Jamie Patterson, and he was a dancer um, in a show. And he said, you are to think about uh, doing Broadway. So I thought maybe I would just go see what it was like, and then I would come back, I would go back home and go to college. Uh, but I went up there to New York. I auditioned and I never, never went back home. <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Fantastic. And so uh, you said your first uh, play was Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God. I remember reading about that in Jet Magazine years ago. Uh, and then, of course, you did uh, Dream Girls. Um, what was that experience like? I mean, well, I guess what I'm asking is, were you ready for all the uh, notoriety that you got from from that role? Um, well, I I wasn't in the sense that um, you know, Dream Girls uh, had an amazing cast, and all of them had already been. They were just a little bit older than me, so they were already. Uh, getting well into their careers. And there was um, Shirley Ralph and Loretta Devine and Cleo Von Derricks, Oba Baba Tunde, all of them had already begun their careers. So we were working on something together. So it wasn't like I was trying to turn out to be a star of anything. It just, you know, it just happened. And so all the attention turned on, on me, you know, and because of, of, the, the role of Effie and that song, and I'm telling you, I'm not going. So that's that was just a lot uh, for a young lady. I had just turned 21 years old when we opened on Broadway. I had started working on Dreamgirls at age 19, but by the time we actually opened on Broadway, 
I had just turned 21. So it was, it was quite a, quite a lot to deal with, you know, especially if you're not, if it wasn't like your plan to, to be a star, <laughs> you know, okay. which is nothing wrong with that. Let me say that, <laughs> you know, it's nothing wrong. If you, if that's your desire to be a star, you know, go for it, but it does come with some some things uh, that you have to be prepared for. And I was not prepared. Um, how long did it run on Broadway, uh, Dreamgirls? Well, Dreamgirls ran a, a very long time on Broadway. Uh, my actual time spent on Broadway was only uh, a year and a half. And then I went on the road with the show to Los Angeles and um, was in that for a year there. So. Uh, most of the time was in creating it and uh, developing the show. And then a lot of us, once it got on its feet, as, as you do with Broadway shows, you basically, you don't kind of, you create your role and then you move on to other things. Okay. Um, now the, I, I say your signature song um, and I am telling you, I'm not going. Um, when you did it, during the when you when you rehearsed it or you got the song did you think it was going to have that huge of an impact that it had particularly in the uh in the african-american community and i am telling well um no because uh Theater is different. So a lot of times when you record things from theater, it's just a cast album. And that's what my song was part of a cast album. And I was fortunate enough that um, uh, an amazing DJ by the name of Frank Crocker, um, he took the song and just played it all the time. And that's how the rest of the world began to hear it. There's a, a famous radio station in New York called WBLS. And, and he just really um, took the song, played it. Other people followed suit because he was a pretty big time DJ. I don't know if they still have DJs like that now in the terms that can actually make records. But uh, back then, you know, there were a few that uh, could really make records, you know, take, take the record and, and just, you know, have it played everywhere. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess, what, 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 let me ask you, what's it like to, um, to have that, uh, like you said, you wasn't really prepared for it, but have that notoriety, um, just off of that, really just that one song. I mean, um, it was, like I said, it was incredible. I've seen people who try to do it. Um, Jennifer Hudson, I thought, did a, a great job in Dreamgirls. Um, but that's sort of like the standard. Um, if you can do Jennifer Holliday's um, that song, then people think you could you can actually sing. So, uh, what was what was that like? Well, I think I think that uh, that I don't know if that if they only have to sing that song in terms of, in thing, but I think in terms of reality shows, you know, like American Idol and The Voice and Star Search and so many of those type of, of shows, um, to be able to pull that song off will put you in a higher, you know, in a higher category, you know? So I think that, um, like I said, for over the, over the years, uh, and we're looking, you know, 40 years ago, that um, what the song started out, it had a slower build. So I didn't, I didn't get overwhelmed by all at one time. And I definitely get to, didn't get to see Black people all at one time either, because back then, 40 years ago, theater was basically all white, you know, and patronized by, by the white audience because it was so expensive. So therefore... I was doing eight shows a week and, you know, only the one day off. So it took a little while for it to build. And back then there was no social media or um, MTV hadn't even started back then. And there was no videos and stuff like that. So a lot of it was really listening to the radio 
and um, kind of uh, people falling in love without even knowing who I was. You know what I'm saying? They didn't even know that the show was from, that the song was from a Broadway show right. too. So that was the other thing. So it, but it took some time for it to kind of really grow. And, uh, and then by that time, uh, by the time I did win my Grammy for it, you know, then it was very well um, known that the show was from a, uh, that the song was from a Broadway show. Okay. So let's get into your new music, which is why I wanted to talk to you. So in love. Um, now, how long has that been out? And what's the reaction that you've been getting from your fans and the general public? Well, uh, uh, it came out for Valentine's Day. That was my, um, I wanted to sing about love and I wanted to make, you know, a return to r and And so um, uh, I wanted it to be out for Valentine's Day this year. And um, the producer and co-songwriter, his name is Terrell Sass, a young man who uh, is a drummer, a great drummer, who has um, uh, played for me on uh, some other um, uh, concerts that I've had. He's also written other songs. And uh, another young man there, the name of uh, David Farmer, who is a uh, piano player. So they basically did the core of the song and then I finished writing it up. Um, Terrell named the song uh, So In Love. And then I just took the rest of it and put it together and and wrote the lyrics and put everything else that, like that together. So it, it's it been a wonderful experience to have people respond to it so well. I feel that they responded to it because um, uh, it's kind of like John Baptiste said when he won his Grammy. He says, "Well, it's not because I'm I'm the best artist that out here." He said, "Because I did something that spoke to a lot of people what that they wanted to hear." So to me, I felt that a lot of people are wanting to return to love and and those uh, classic R and B love songs, and that's that's why I think they're responding to um, and you know my fans and who haven't heard me in a while. And then, then quite introduced me to quite a few new fans. And then um, just recently uh, released the video a couple of weeks ago on YouTube. And the response has just been so beautiful in the sense that it is exactly that, that people want to feel love and they want to feel that good old R&B classic type R&B love song too. That's one of the reasons why I started the uh, Bring Back Soul Music podcast because I figured I can't be the only one that's missing this kind of music. <laughs> we'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code, VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with my brother Todd Woodson. Now, this is just the, uh, the single. Um, is there an album forthcoming, or what's the plan well, going forward? Well, you know, I was thinking, I was like, okay, let's, let's just re release the single. Cause I don't have a label or, you know, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So just put it on my, you know, end released it independent, you know, uh, on my own imprint and just said, okay, let's just put it out there and see what the reaction would be, you know, to kind of get a direction that if we did do an EP or an entire album, you know, what, what kind of things would do. So I had no idea, like I said, that people would respond the way that they did. And also, although I'm very, you know, happy about it. So now I have to think, okay, how do I 
either, like I said, do an EP or an album because I don't have a label. So, um, you know, the funding for that or wherever you would, you know, what, what I would do with that. So just kind of weigh all of my options. You know, I would love if um, I could come to, to the attention of, of someone who could help me better than I can help myself, if you understand what I'm saying, you know, in this where I don't have a label, I don't have, you know, funding to just kind of like say, okay, we're going to lay out this money to do a whole project or the marketing money that goes into everything. So um, I, I feel very good and very positive that, that, that will come to me. So that's what I'm hoping that, that someone will say, you know what, let's, um, let's invest in Jennifer Holiday and, and just see, you know, some old school, you know, um, music and mix with the new freshness of today. And um, so, yeah, so I'm remaining hopeful. Um, now I'm not gonna wait too long. If it doesn't happen, I, I am gonna find a way to, I'll find a way to get more music made on, on my own, you know. Yeah. Um, do you plan on doing any kind of, uh, I mean, summer's right around the corner. I guess we're almost there. Are you doing any kind of touring at all to support this project or? No, I am going into a Broadway show called oh. Chicago. I'm going to oh, play Michael okay. Morton and I will be in that for the whole summer. And so, um, uh, so that is uh, only one day off. <laughs> you know there so i will so i'll be uh yeah playing the role of mama morton the queen latifah role for those of you who only know the movie not the broadway show okay i was just about to ask you are you still doing broadway but you've answered that yeah uh, i guess once broadway's in your blood it just never never leaves is that that's correct yeah i'm a broadway baby and um i feel that um i i probably would have definitely had some kind of career without Broadway, but I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't planning to be uh, an entertainer, but I'm I'm glad that I did start with theater first because I think that that's why I still have my voice. Everybody's always like, oh my God, how is your voice still so strong and still there? And I really think it's because of my Broadway training. To, have, to do eight shows a week, you have to know what you're doing. <laughs> You know, you know how to know how to take care of your voice, and you—it's an instrument, and you'd have to know how to pace yourself to get through all of those shows. Yeah, I can imagine. So you're doing eight shows a week for the entire summer. For the entire summer, yes. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, I guess if, like you said, if you had the training, you could you could do it. I don't know if I could do eight shows a week for the entire summer. That's that seems pretty taxing, but. How many shows you do a day? I'm um, just curious. Is it one show a day or is it? Well, you do one show a day and then two shows on weekends. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, two shows on Saturday and two shows on Sunday. And uh, so in my opening night is June 9th, um, which is a Thursday night. And uh, so, yeah, I'm um, I'm very excited. And so I'll be there um, pretty much, you know, all the way till the end of August. Okay. Right on. Mm -hmm. Um, well, um, anything else, well, you know, um, let me ask you a question. Um, we spoke about very briefly about dream girls, the movie. What did you think about the movie? I thought that the movie was very good. Just like any, uh, time they take something that's like from Broadway to make it a movie, or even sometimes when they make a remake of a movie, they always leave something out. So they left a lot of stuff out that was from the Broadway play, you know, that I missed. But other than that, you know, I thought it was very well done. And of course, you know, uh, Jennifer Hudson, you know, was also excellent, did an excellent job. Uh, it's just that it were a lot of things that they, that they left out, a lot of things that they changed that, um, you know, make you kind of go, uh, you know, that sort of thing, you know, but that's with any remake. Right. Right. Know? And I guess, um, I guess the play probably was a lot longer than the actual movie. Yes. So they had to do some cutting and rearranging there. Yeah. Um, Miss Holiday, tell people where they can reach out to you. You mentioned your, uh, 
your video on YouTube, but where can people reach out to you on social media? Yes, well, um, yes, the video uh, So In Love is on my YouTube channel, Jennifer Holiday One, Holiday Spell with two L's. And then um, I'm most active on Instagram right now. So that's Jennifer Holiday Dream Girl. Uh, I'm trying to get better at Twitter. And that's Lady J Holiday. And uh, I'm also trying to get better with my Facebook page. So that's Jennifer, just Jennifer Holiday. And I have not done TikTok yet, but I am going to be trying that during my run in Chicago. I said, I'm going to be in one place and there ought to be something that amazing that I can do in New York with all of that backdrop and scenery. So I should be able to create something nice to make my interest on TikTok. Okay. Fair <laughs> but enough. My name on TikTok is, is Jennifer Holiday Dream Girl. Okay. And if you're going to be in the New York area, I guess during the summer, um, please check out Chicago. What theater is it going to be at in Chicago? At the in Ambassador Theater. Ambassador Theater. Okay. Yes. And um, yeah, so it's a it's a fun show. And uh, it's one of, um, I don't know, it's just like you just enjoy it. It's kind of like a, that old, old kind of Broadway, but everything moves very quickly. And you'll and you'll have just a lot of fun. It's not it's not as deep as when I because I was in the color purple in 2016 on Broadway and I did um, the Sugar Avery role with the uh, Cynthia Erivo, and so that was a heavy show, you know, in terms of just you know a lot of emotions and stuff. This one is a great show and it's just it's a lot of excitement and it moves very very quickly. So I think that people will enjoy it. You know, murder mystery. It's a murder mystery. <laughs> All right. Um, and so we'll post Miss Holiday's information on our um, in the show notes on this video, and also on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I have one. I have one more thing. Can I say? Absolutely, word? absolutely. Okay, so I also did, and I and I uh, had just forgot about this. I also did my first acting role in a movie now I've done lots of television and I've done lots of soundtracks for movies but this will be my first um acting role in a um a dramatic movie now it's a nun unfortunately it's none singing so I won't be singing in it um but it's a a very um a good movie it's called the road to Galena and it is going to be um, released worldwide in selected theaters on July 8th. And it's also going to be on several uh, streaming platforms. So if you follow me on e any of my um, social media sites, you'll be able to uh, get a chance to look at it. So I was very excited, very excited about that. So I hope I get to do um, more of that because uh, that was the only thing on my bucket list that I hadn't really done. I had done music and, but I had never actually been in a movie. So this is my first one. <laughs> okay. And so you guys are already done the filming now. It's just going yeah, to be released. We, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, what's the date again? July 8th. July 8th. So it's right around yeah. the corner. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, and so you said I in will, select theaters and also you know. streaming. It'll be streaming as well. And so, um, and it's called The Road to Galena, G-A-L-E-N-A. -E and um, it's from AVA Productions. So A-V-A Productions. So I will, like I said, um, I will keep you posted and uh, let you know about uh, the opening and stuff. So I'm very excited. <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of that, um, you want to give us a little teaser of what's it about or you can't do that or? Well, oh no, I can no, I definitely can do that. It's actually um uh I play a uh restaurant owner in um a small town and it focuses on these four friends who start college together and they grow up and they have both they all have successful careers, but then they come back to this little town to attend a funeral and they all reunite. And then they realize what's important about life. And so it's a, a very message oriented um, uh, film. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So it sounds like your plate is pretty filled. Staying well, busy. 
I try, I'm trying to stay busy. I got a slow start off to the year, but then when I, when I started it, it was kind of like, you know, it was just kind of nice. It was just like one thing. And then I don't know if you saw, I was on the mass singer. So I was doing the mass singer at the same time, trying to figure out how to do the video. So doing that at the same time, uh, and trying to do the video without even telling people that I was doing mass singer. So that was hard. <laughs> so it was just a lot. So it's been, it's been a good year. It's been a good year so far. And I'm very grateful for all these different, you know, versatile, like you said in the beginning that, um, that I, that I do feel that I have a versatile career, you know, to do theater or TV or now film uh, or music and as a, um, you know, singer and songwriter and actress. So this is, this is good, you know, and I'm 61 years old. And I wow. think that it's a story for anyone that your dreams can come true at any age. And so, um, you know, there was a time that I was trying to figure out, you know, if I was going to even be uh, relevant uh, in these latter years. And here I am making a new start with my career. I've been rediscovered and I've uh, been um, also, you know, back with my fans in terms of them being right there who never left me, but introducing me to you. I have actually I have younger, younger fans uh, now than, I, than I've ever had, you know, some as old as five years old. I think I saw even some have DM'd me and, and they're even as young as three years old. So, wow. so it's just, um, it's, it's a wonderful, exciting time and I'm looking forward to the future and I'm open towards anything. So, you know, so everybody, you just hold on, you know, there's a dream out there with your name on it. And uh, I'm, I'm living proof that, um, that you can make a new start uh, at any age and, um, you know, you can also learn new things. And that's, that's why I did Mass Singer, because everybody said, why would you do Mass Singer? I said, because I, it was fun. And that doesn't seem like something that I would do. Right. And um, I wanted my fans, a lot of my fans love that show. And I wanted to be on something that they love and appreciate that I can, they can, we can laugh together. And even though I didn't, you know, when, but um, still the thing was to, hey, let's give it a try and be open, you know? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Miss, Miss Holiday, let me ask you a question. What do you think about the, um, the state of R&B music now? Well, I feel that R&B music today, of course, is defined different than when I was around in the 90s and then even earlier in that, definitely the 80s and the 70s, you know, but but I'm not concerned about the future of music and R&B. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of it is from where these young people are today from their from their heart, from their soul. A lot of us can't even identify with the experiences that they've gone through. You know, when you listen to the lyrics, um, some of it, you know, especially if you can get past, you know, some of the cursing and everything like that. But, you know, uh, when I was coming up, Millie Jackson said some stuff worse than whatever, and there were other people. But I, when I listen to the music, First and foremost, I listen to the lyrics of what they're saying. And even what there are, we don't have any like male R&B singers and stuff. And one of the reasons why we don't have that is because we're not focusing enough on them because there are singers out there, young singers who um, have made projects that I, I feel are good, who have good voices, um, who have good songs, and um, they haven't been able to break through. So I, I don't know how that's going to be different. Um, of course, the females today, I think that are really good. Of course, they're having to be a lot more risque. So I don't know how far that will take them. But I do feel that 
a lot of the music, if you're listening for music um, and where we are today, that we have to figure out how to get both together, you know? And that's why I feel this past Grammys was one of the best in a long time in terms of blending uh, traditional, you know, R&B classic with what the newness of the freshness of today. You know, okay. and I think the more that we can can do that, I think that we'll we'll be fine. I don't think that there's any way we can get what we had from yesterday because singer songwriters from those days um, had a different approach to songwriting. Also, uh, the artists from back then, a lot of us had to sing R and B, which was written by white people. That's the other thing you don't understand. Not only were the songs written by white people, but produced by white people. Nothing wrong with white people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that these young people today, writing their own songs, writing their own lyrics, learning about the business end of music, learning about how to be more than just an artist and brand yourself uh, so that they can have something to look back on. A lot of us, from our my age group and older, um, you know, were left at the mercy of the record companies. These young people are are learning entrepreneurship in the midst of learning music. They're trying to do it all at the same time and grow up. So you have to be proud of them in that sense. And hopefully, we have to just keep your like you know shows like yours and other uh, shows. Um, that will inspire people to listen to, um, you know, the old school and in the back in the day and real, real soul music, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. (laughs) Well, you've had a a storied career and it seemed like it's just, it just keeps on going. So congratulations on all your success. Thank you. And I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and you all have a, Wonderful, wonderful, happy summer filled with love and uh, new op- opportunities and prayer for everyone's safety. Prayer Very for- nice, nicely put. And that's Jennifer Holiday on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Jennifer Holiday. You can find out more about Jennifer on her social media sites. Don't forget to pick up her new single, So In Love, available on Amazon. The link is below. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to check out all our merch at The Soul Shop at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.